Hey there, Future Capsuleers. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll be guiding you through your first steps in the vast and complex universe of EVE Online, while also providing technical insights to help you get the most of your experience. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. All right, let's get started with the basics. EVE Online is a massive multiplayer online game set in a persistent universe where players can explore, trade, build, and fight. As a new player, you'll start by creating a character, choosing a race, bloodline, and appearance. Your race determines your starting location and the ships and skills you'll initially have access to. But don't worry, you can train any skill and fly any ship regardless of the race you choose to start as. Understanding the EVE Online user interface is essential for efficient gameplay. So take time to familiarize yourself with key UI elements such as the overview, neocom, capacitor, and selected item window. Uh, customizing your UI by adding, removing columns, resizing windows, and adjusting settings will greatly enhance your experience. Thankfully nowadays, they give you the overview set as something that was inspired by a public hosted one, I guess you can call it but the UI has come a long ways from the default. Things you might want to add is D-Scan, Probe Scanner, uh, Chat Windows Galore, and up to you. I like to have locations and local in their own little thing. Now, once you created a character, you'll be guided through a tutorial that introduces you to the game's mechanics, such as navigation, combat, and industry. I highly recommend you do the tutorial for this game. It's the kind of game where you need to learn the basics. After completing the tutorial, it's also highly recommended that you visit the career agents and do those. You'll start literally with nothing. Through the career agents, you'll learn a bit more on how to play the game and you'll get ISK, you'll get ships, you'll get skill books, I believe, and just about, yeah, enough to start off the game actually. <laughs> so do the career agent missions, highly recommend it. Well, you don't need to worry about it for the career agent missions. If you want to get good with some efficient mission running, uh, you got to have some proper mission planning. So research the mission objectives, the enemies, the potential hazards, and fit your ship accordingly. If you're going up against a certain faction, they're going to do a certain damage and they're going to resist a certain damage. All that information is online and available. So researching your target and what you're supposed to be doing is super important sometimes. Now, skills in EVE Online are single-handedly probably the most annoying thing you're gonna have to deal with playing this game. You're always gonna be skilling into something. So, if you're just starting the game, I wanna get you out of the mindset that bigger is better. Bigger is not always better. Uh, bigger has its use and it is fun, but what is better is that you fly more things now so you can experience more things now. So Tech 1 Cruisers, Tech 1 Destroyers, Tech 1 Frigates, and I highly recommend early on, probably after about a month applying, you start learning Tech 2 Frigates. That way you even then more diversify what you can fly. So yeah, as a new player, once you got some of the base skills going, like the Magic 14 to at least like level three, get something level two. And I recommend Frigates. Um, You'll have scouts, you'll have bombers, you'll have assault frigates, you'll have Oaji, you'll have so many things you can now do because of this simple nine day train versus, oh, I want to fly a paladin. That's like a three month train <laughs> at least. And that doesn't even include the guns. I think Marauder 5 is 36 days alone. It's, it's better to have these little things now so you can learn what you like. Maybe you like Logi, maybe you like DPS. Okay, maybe my next thing I wanna get into is a cruiser, tech two cruiser for this faction or this faction. Your skill queue is gonna naturally always develop and grow to whatever you like or are interested. So if you like a lot of shield ships, that means you need to get the shield support skills. If you like a lot of armor ships, you need to get the armor support skills. If you like missile boats, you need to get the missile support skills. If you like laser boats, you gotta get the energy weapon support skills. And then the gunnery support skills, which generally help all the other guns, which is great, but there's just so many other skills. Training in this game is a, it's a hassle. And one way around a lot of this is that you can use things like the Praxis, the Gnosis, are two great options that you can get. They are skillless ships. The Praxis is a battleship, 
takes zero skills to get inside, so you get to use whatever weapon system you want on it, and it gets a bonus. It's amazing. It's really great for people who are low on skills. That means the only things you really have to train is then just a little bit of shield skills or armor skills, depends however you want to fit the Praxis, and then whatever one weapon system you like. For something like Praxis, you want like heavy missiles or something, so tech two heavy missiles maybe, and that's all you need. <laughs> Versus if you try to do that in anything else, you would need so much more skills. <laughs> All right, so you got a skill queue going. Hopefully something's on it. What exactly do you do in EVE? Well, in EVE you could say the goal is to make money, because with money you can do more things. Uh, our currency is the ISK, Interstellar Credits. We use it to buy ships, modules, and literally everything. Um, ways to make ISK include mining, uh, missions, exploration, trading, and industry. As a new player, the first thing you're probably going to try to do is go out and mine in your venture. Sure, go out, do it, make your money, but uh, do know that that is very little money. Mining operations in the game tend to be larger operations using ships that are specialized for it, that pull in way more than you're pulling in. I think your time would be better off used with something else, maybe like exploration, where you can go and hack relic and data sites and make decent money. Especially because you can go into wormhole space and hack NPC relic data sites that can make you anywhere from 15 to 100 million isk per site. So it's really good opportunity there. And of course the risk is just a tinky little 5 million isk ship. Once you have a decent amount of money, trading becomes an option. And with trading, you typically, you know, buy low, sell high. So you'll be putting out buy orders wherever you found good margins on items that you can then flip to sell on a sell order. That, or what some people do, is you can use external sources like Eve Appraisal to look at the value of items in one area and then compare it to another to see if you should buy here, sell there. That is completely a thing inside this game. Buy orders will be higher in a different area, so if you just move it, you'll basically get paid for transportation. Another easy thing you can do when you're first starting the game is just plain old mission running. You gotta grind out those level one missions anyways, because you gotta get that level two mission person, which you gotta also grind out to get that level three, which you also have to grind out to get the level four, which is what you want for mission running in high sec. And during all that grinding, you'll be learning the game a bit more. So thankfully it is a kind of a stepping stool. Easy sights, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, proper. <laughs> if you want to run level four missions, you're going to need like a battleship. If you want to run level threes, I think you could do level threes in a cruiser. And level twos and level ones can definitely be done inside Destroyer, which you will get if you complete your career agent missions. So get those career agent missions done, then you can go grind some level one missions and level two missions for some uh, faction you want to increase. When looking for factions, it's good to note that not every faction that you can increase your standings with is really one you want to be doing because some have more missions than others and some have very localized missions like i like the fed navy one because they do have higher level missions available but some factions like the sister of eve don't have level five missions like they do have a level four which is cool but if you ever wanted a level five you'd have to go redo all the relation building with a different faction at this point we have a ship that we're in, that we're doing whatever. We're training towards whatever we have chosen, and we're living wherever we have decided. Based off those three things, we need to now find a corporation to live in. So using the in-game corp tool, you can find and filter corporations based off your interests that you have now established. If you want to get into mission running, find a high sit corp that likes mission running. If you like the idea of wormhole space, find a wormhole corp that's probably new player friendly. Do note wormhole corps typically are more advanced, so you really got to specify and find one that says new player friendly. Um, but even then, like Eve Uni, they have a wormhole division, so you can join that. Finding a corporation that meets your needs and satisfies your curiosities will improve your gameplay exponentially. It is so much better having people available to the content that you're interested in, knowing how to do it and being able to help you grow in doing it. If you want to learn how to do C5 sites, join a C5 corp that knows how to do C5 sites. They'll teach you. And if you're looking for corporations to join, there's certain Reddit pages that'll, uh, that are good to look at. There's Eve Jobs. I know posts about uh, active positions and the Eve uh, Forms does have a page for corporations that are actively recruiting. 
Uh, so check those out. I'll link them below. Now, engaging in PvP. Player versus player. The best kind of combat there is. It's a core aspect of EVE Online, and it can be thrilling and challenging. You gotta start by participating in low stakes PvP, like faction warfare or small gang roams. This is why I mentioned getting into frigates as soon as possible. Tech two frigates, they're good, they're cheap, and they're great for learning PvP. From these experiences, you can learn and practice your situational awareness, develop your understanding of ship capabilities and tactics, and remember, losing ships is a natural part of learning process. Do not get discouraged every time you die. I lose expensive things. It happens. You will lose expensive things one day. It will happen. All right, so before I finish talking about PvP, I will mention, I'm gonna link a video at the top of the description. And it's gonna to be to an old video that I got shown. The guy hosting it really well explained manually flying your ship for PvP. He was really good at it, way better than I can ever demonstrate. So please go check that link out if you wanna learn more about PvP because you gotta start at flying your own ship. And with frigates, that's perfect. So the final thing new players really need to do is ask questions. And if you ever have one, there is a channel for you. It's called Rookie Help. There is veteran players in there willing, ready, and waiting to answer questions for newer players. If you have a question about anything, it'll get answered probably 95% of the time. And aside from that, the EVE Online community is pretty vast and diverse, with countless resources available to help you on your journey. This includes forums, YouTube channels, podcasts, and blogs. They all offer amazing advice, guides, and news. But with that, welcome to EVE Online. Can't wait to see you in local. Have a great day. And fly dangerous. Oh, you're dead anyway. And dead. Oh, yeah, I don't have. That pod might get away. Oh, I got a bubble up. Nice. I changed it in time. Oh. Oh.